Welcome to the Mosomic MEMS Microphone Guide. In this episode, we continue going through my list of key value indicators for MEMS microphones. In this one, we talk about distortion and dynamic range. Stay tuned! This series is sponsored by Infineon Technologies. Hi, I'm Mikko Sumanto from Mosomic. Signal fidelity is a key performance and quality indicator for MEMS microphones. Fidelity means that the microphone takes the input sound and outputs it with minimal changes to the characteristics of the signal, apart from converting it from acoustic sound into an electrical signal. Wikipedia says that uh, distortion is the alteration of the original shape or other characteristic of something. For sound, this means that the shape of the information-bearing signal changes. For a microphone, distortion is a key factor that describes the linearity and thereby fidelity of the captured signals. To maintain high fidelity, the amount of distortion added by the microphone or the microphone system to the signal should be minimized. Low distortion is one of the key enablers for high signal quality as perceived by people as well as by digital signal processing algorithms. There are different kinds of distortion. Distortion adds content to a signal. In the case of harmonic distortion, the added content is at the harmonic frequencies of the signal. Harmonic frequencies are overtones that are whole number multiples of the frequencies present in the original undistorted signal. We can see that a pure, undistorted sine signal contains no harmonic frequencies. A square wave can be thought to be a very distorted sine signal. It includes a lot of information at the harmonic frequencies. Distortion can add also inharmonic overtones to the signal. In MEMS microphone systems, harmonic distortion is caused by, for example, mechanical nonlinearities in the microphone or electrical limitations of the signal chain. For example, an inadequate maximum signal level of the signal path. Frequency response distortion means that the relative amplitudes of different frequencies present in the sound signal change. This is caused by a frequency response of the microphone system that is not flat. Phase distortion happens when a time delay caused by a signal phase shift as it passes through a microphone is different for different frequencies contained in the signal. This causes some parts of the output signal to be out of phase with the rest of the output. I talked in more detail about phase distortion and frequency response in episode 6. Amplitude distortion means that the output amplitude of a system is not a linear function of the input amplitude. Clipping is a severe type of amplitude distortion that has a big impact on signal quality. Heavy distortion like clipping also compresses the signal. Also different kinds of noise such as hiss, hum, RF noise and ambient acoustic noise change the contents and shape of a sound wave, but this kind of addition of unwanted content is not considered to be a signal distortion. A key fact for this episode is that all audio transducers, microphones included, are nonlinear systems. When a signal passes through a nonlinear device, the signal gets distorted. Also the signal path through which the microphone output signal passes may be nonlinear or limit the maximum signal level that can pass through. The sources for distortion in a microphone or a microphone system are electrical or mechanical. The higher the incoming sound pressure level is, the more likely it is that the signal will get distorted. The main mechanical sources for distortion are the MEMS sensor and the acoustics inside the microphone. For example, in the case of a capacitive sensor, the movement of the membrane typically becomes more and more nonlinear the higher the incoming sound pressure level is. The forces that impede the deflection of the membrane, such as membrane stretching or springs the membrane is suspended with, are progressive, so the further the membrane is deflected from its resting state, the more the movement is restricted. The progressive nature of the mechanical forces apply also to other kinds of sensors, such as piezoelectric systems. Also, as we discussed in episode 3, 
The back volume of the microphone acts as an air spring affecting the movement of the membrane. The spring force of the air in the back volume is also progressive. The more you compress it, the more it fights back. The smaller the back volume is, the more it restricts the movement of the membrane. There can also be mechanical factors that set hard limits for the maximum excursion of the microphone sensor element. When the sensor element is suddenly stopped at maximum deflection, the result can be severe distortion. One more source of mechanical distortion is that there can also be displacement-dependent acoustical leaks that may, for example, let low frequencies escape when the excursion of the sensor element is big. This can happen with, for example, spring-mounted membranes, piezoelectric levers, and so on. Nonlinear properties or saturation of the electrical signal path running inside the microphone or outside the microphone are other sources for distortion. For example, rail voltages may not be high enough to support the highest microphone signal levels. The signal saturates when it approaches or exceeds the maximum voltage the signal line can handle. Also amplifier input stages and other electrical components and circuitry may not be able to handle the signal, causing distortion. The electrical support circuitry for the sensor element inside the microphone may also be limited. For example, the MEMS sensor biasing system may have trouble coping with very high signal levels at the sensor element. In digital microphones, the circuitry related to the analog to digital conversion and the digital output of the microphone can also cause distortion. Like I already mentioned, the conversion process can cause aliasing and quantization noise. The maximum signal level may also be limited by the digital interface. If the digital signal level rises to a level too close to the digital full-scale level, the distortion level rises rapidly. The distortion performance of a MEMS microphone is typically measured as total harmonic distortion, THD. THD is the ratio of the energy in the second and higher signal harmonics to the energy in the first, fundamental, harmonic. In other words, THD is the ratio of the root mean square of the amplitudes of the harmonic frequencies to the RMS amplitude of the fundamental frequency. It's measured at the output of the microphone. THD is given as a percentage. For MEMS microphones, THD is often measured by exciting the microphone with a 1 kHz sine signal at a relatively high sound pressure level, often 94 dB SPL or higher. The measurement sound pressure level can be as high as 140 dB SPL, or even higher. THD can also be plotted against the input sound pressure level to show the behavior of the microphone at different levels. In the plot, SPL is on the x-axis and THD on the y-axis. To achieve meaningful THD measurement results at high sound pressure levels, the measurement environment has to be carefully designed to ensure a low distortion level for the sound input to the microphone. For example, a closed measurement box, an adiabatic chamber, may be needed to enable sound pressure levels as high as 140 dB SPL with less than 1% THD. The number of harmonics, or the frequency bandwidth, included in the calculation must be specified. Including the harmonics up to the fifth one is a common practice. A lower THD means that the microphone adds less distortion to the signal, and therefore the output of the microphone is a more accurate representation of the incoming sound signal. However, a THD percentage alone doesn't tell us how audible harmonic distortion is or how bad it sounds. The audibility depends on the exact type of harmonic distortion, more specifically the frequencies at which the notable harmonics lie. The higher the frequencies, the less the distortion is masked from the human ear by the fundamental signal. Lower order harmonics, closer to the fundamental signal, are less audible. Also, odd order harmonics are said to be generally more audible than even order harmonics. The audibility and acceptability of harmonic distortion depends also on the application and the nature of the captured sound. Of course, the acceptability of distortion depends also on the quality goals for the captured sound. Distortion affects the quality of a speech signal, but speech can be significantly distorted before intelligibility is lost. What comes to algorithms, such as noise reduction systems and speech recognition, 
The impact of a rising THD depends on the design and performance of the algorithm. Distortion changes the contents of the signal, and this may confuse the algorithms that perform very detailed analysis of the signal. Generally, distortion is likely to affect algorithm performance negatively. In a bad case, distortion can be so overpowering that it makes the captured content unusable, for example, because speech has become unintelligible or music so distorted that there's no enjoyment in listening to it. For reference, the THD of a pure square wave with infinite harmonics is 48%. If noise is included in the distortion measurement result, the parameter is total harmonic distortion plus noise, THD plus N. In addition to harmonic distortion, THD plus N includes also the noise in the signal, such as the self-noise of the microphone, hiss, hum, and other possible disturbances. THD plus N can be more comparable between devices and labs than just THD. THD plus N can be measured by first inputting a sine wave into the microphone and measuring the RMS output amplitude. The output is then notch filtered to remove the input frequency and the RMS amplitude of the resulting signal is compared to the unfiltered output signal. THD and THD plus N test results may be A-weighted to make them reflect how the audibility of distortion to human ears depends on the signal frequency. Acoustic overload point, AOP, is a parameter that describes the distortion performances of microphones at high sound pressure levels. AOP is the sound pressure level at which THD exceeds 10%. The parameter AOP was taken into use to enable describing distortion using units that most people understand and can relate to. Sound pressure level measured in decibels. The higher the AOP value is, the better. Up until recent years, the AOP values of microphones in consumer electronics have varied approximately between 110 and 120 dB SPL. In many cases, 120 dB SPL is a high enough level, but there are use cases and environments in which the microphone should be able to handle louder sounds. Nowadays, the AOPs of high-performance microphones are around 130 dB SPL, or even higher. This AOP level helps ensure high signal quality in most cases. High AOP means that the distortion level in the signal remains reasonable, even if the incoming sound pressure level is very high. The capturing system benefits of this when the wanted sounds are very loud or when the disturbances are very loud. Smartphones, cameras and wearables are good examples of devices that are used in loud environments, such as music concerts or loud sports events, to capture loud sounds. Sometimes the device itself is loud creating its own disturbances. That can be the case in speech control systems, in which it may be necessary to, for example, give commands to the device while the device itself is outputting music or other content at a high volume. The speaker blasting high volume content can be located only a few centimeters from the microphones. Giving voice commands to a loud device is called barge in. Barge in requires high performance of the speech recognition algorithms as well as from noise cancellation and echo cancellation systems. These systems are likely to perform better if the microphone signals remain undistorted. Another example of a case where the disturbance levels can be very high is wind. As most of us have probably noticed in amateur videos, wind is a common cause for poor sound quality in recordings done outdoors. Wind noise is difficult to mitigate without elaborate mechanical wind protection systems. A high AOP can improve the performance of a microphone system with certain types of wind noise. The 10% THD limit specified for AOP is a fairly high distortion level. 10% is suitable for use cases where a certain amount of distortion does not affect sound quality significantly, but it is still important to avoid complete saturation of the signal. In some cases, a 10% THD is unacceptable. For professional microphones, the maximum sound pressure level is typically specified with a significantly lower THD than 10%, typically 1%. 1% THD is typically inaudible also in more delicate use cases. 
So it's a suitable THD target also for so-called hi-fi applications, where sound quality requirements are very high. The high sound pressure level performances of MEMS microphones can also be specified using maximum sound pressure levels and lower THD values than the 10% specified for AOP. The maximum sound pressure level of a microphone is typically specified by stating a sound pressure level and the maximum distortion level at that sound pressure level. For MEMS microphones in consumer electronics, a good maximum sound pressure level target is maximum 1% THD at 120 dB SPL. Specifying the maximum sound pressure level as a peak value gives a good indication of the microphone's real-life capabilities. Specifying the maximum as a root mean square number would not tell much about the microphone's ability to handle the highest peaks. Dynamic range is the range from the lowest signal to the highest signal that a microphone can handle. Often, for MEMS microphones, the dynamic range is defined as the distance from the self-noise of the microphone to its acoustic overload point, AOP. The goal for a high-quality microphone system should be that the dynamic range is big enough to cope with the dynamic ranges of the sound signals that the microphone will be used for. One thing to note is that noise affects signal quality significantly above the self-noise level of the microphone, so the whole range from the acoustic overload point to the self-noise isn't necessarily usable. There must be a certain amount of separation from the information-bearing signal to the self-noise of the microphone in order for the signal quality to be acceptable. The separation needed between the signal and the noise depends on the contents of the signal and the signal quality requirements. As the self-noises of MEMS microphones keep dropping and the AOPs keep rising, the dynamic ranges of MEMS microphones are becoming very big. The equivalent input noise level of a microphone that has a 72 dB SNR is 22 dB SPL. If the AOP of the same microphone is 132 dB SPL, the resulting dynamic range is 110 dB. This means that the maximum signal level is about 316,000 times higher than the minimum signal level. This kind of dynamic ranges are very difficult for microphones and the signal chains to handle. Okay, that's it for this episode. In this one we covered distortion and signal linearity, total harmonic distortion, acoustic overload point, as well as dynamic range. In episode 9, we'll continue talking about the key value indicators for MEMS microphones. That one will be about current consumption, power supply rejection and power supply rejection ratio, radio frequency disturbances, and ESD. I hope I'll see you around. Cheers! If you have any comments or questions, write them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also contact me online or on social media. If you liked what you saw here, give a like for the video and subscribe to the Mosomic channel. That way you help me reach more people and thereby create more content. If you need more in-depth microphone training than what you saw here, contact me and we can arrange it. The training can be adapted to suit any interests and skill levels and the customer can choose the location and duration of the course. Mosomic provides also consultation services in all things related to MEMS microphones. If you're a microphone buyer, I can help you select the right components for your product and manage your microphone suppliers. I can also assist in implementing the microphones into your device. For microphone manufacturers, I provide microphone marketing, product definition, product management, and development management services. I can also help you create all kinds of MEMS microphone documentation, 